Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're outdoors because we are done on the inside. We've got mechanical guys, plumber, they're all working inside and Greg and I are gonna start trying to get this outside wrapped up. Now, I was hoping that we would kind of carry in through most of the winter inside and then, you know, start warming up and then we get outside, but it's cold this morning. We wanna start building these porches, but before we do that, we've got our scissor lift out here on the front of the building on that concrete because Greg and I, we never did this trim right here. So the trim that locks down our panel to our cleat trim, we got lucky because we didn't have any problems through the winter, through any of the major windstorms. And that just goes to show you that even though our steel roof wasn't even secured, we didn't have any issues. You know, I was just doing that for testing purposes, uh, purely scientific, not because we actually forgot and uh, didn't get it done. First thing we're doing, is these clips right here. So you can see the clips. These are getting, um, they have like a hem on the backside and they are pulling this panel down so that it cannot move and it's securing it to this cleat trim. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is putting our actual finished trim over top of all this so it looks beautiful. Got our first piece on, you can see it over here. You'll see how we notch the top, we notch the bottom and then we screw through this face right here. Now that's gonna hold this piece because remember, there's no fasteners in this. It literally clips over top of this top trim that actually this is the roof panel that's bent up and then it clips onto this bottom bend out and then we're gonna fold the hem so that it closes off. So this is actually closed and it can't you know, pull off in the wind. And now our next piece is going to go right over top of this. We will need to go ahead probably and shoot just a little bit of sealant here just for added protection, even though if moisture does get here, it really is not gonna damage anything. It's just gonna work its way out since there's no fasteners underneath this or anything. It's just gonna run out the bottom. Probably good practice. What do you think, Greg? What? Okay, you don't, good, good. Here we've got this piece, it's notched and we can put sealant here, but honestly, I feel like sealant, you know, it, it, it's, it kind of oozes out and gets all weird. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a nice piece of um, good seal tape. You know, this is the stuff that since it'll be covered, it's not gonna have like UV damage. And we're just looking for somewhat of a, of a physical barrier so that moisture can't work its way in. And then we're gonna go ahead, I gotta put my gloves on. It is brisk and chilly. Hopefully the wind isn't too bad on my mic. But then I'm gonna take this piece, we've got this hem. You can see the openness in the hem and it's going to lock right down. First I gotta make sure, oh boy. This is gonna slide up under here. I'm just gonna hold that. We gotta make sure that we're on top, right where we wanna be. And then this down here, this is the hard part because we don't want this to come out. It's gotta be tight. We're gonna kinda roll it. And then you see that it's popping. popping right over top. And then what we'll do, we'll take our benders. I always grab a piece of cardboard just to protect it a little bit. And then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna close this so that it tightens around uh, that cleat trim. In essence, it's not gonna be able to go anywhere. Looks pretty good, huh? Not bad, not bad. But we got a lot yet to do. But this also locks down this first panel of, uh, of metal roof too, because now there's, there's no way that the wind can get underneath of it or, you know, lift it off the roof. There, that'll keep that all locked down nice. Ooh, don't show that, don't show that, man. It doesn't line up perfectly. Oh, we're a bunch of hacks. All right, that's the detail you can see. We got a nice uh, clean detail. It's not coming off. And these rivets are the only thing that is in this flashing detail and it's all on the outside. Water's not gonna be going in there causing any issues. And that kind of seals off this, this roof detail. No fasteners penetrating the roof deck that are visible. Zero chance for any leaks as long as we detailed everything correctly. So it's pretty cool. Time to start framing a roof. Now that we, uh, we don't need to have the lift here to get up to this detail, we can start building the porch. I'm excited for that, so let's go. 
Hey, what's up guys? I'm excited because today is the start of this porch build. And I think that the porch is really what's gonna set this building off from just being somewhat of a box. Now, I think it looks great now that we have windows installed, but this porch is really where the details are. Now, the other day, Greg and I had a little bit of time to spare. Even though the weather was really crappy, we got out here, we used the LA-180 um, layout station from Stabila to go ahead and get all of our dimensions uh, put down on the concrete. So we went around, made little Sharpie marks so that today we can just go ahead and snap some lines, pull some dimensions and get the layout of the post. The big thing was making sure that all of our corners, since we have all this wraparound porch and we've got this bump out gable here on the front, we wanted to make sure that all those dimensions were square so that as we build the porch, we get to the roof, you know, things actually work out like they should and we can use math to our advantage. That's what we're gonna do this morning. We're gonna get all of our brackets set then we're gonna get our dimensions uh, with the rotary laser so that we can cut all of our columns in the comfort of this building that is heated because they're calling 30 to 40 mile an hour wind gusts and cold temperatures. Hence why I've got the True Work bibs and uh, I think this is the, I don't know, S3 hoodie or whatever. Good for wind block and keeping keeping warm. Greg is wearing the park. No, you even took the park off. Too warm, huh? Too warm, dude. I knew it. Greg had the T4 parka. I knew that was gonna to be too warm. I think he's crazy without his bibs on right now, but he built different, I guess. So what we did was uh, we got these Simpson brackets these are a six by six bracket. And then we went ahead and used some good Rust-Oleum spray paint, painted them black because, well, I don't know. I think the black will look a lot nicer with the siding choice and what we got going on than a galvanized um, post base. Even though it could be covered up, I think, it's, I think it'll look good with the black. Okay, well that was uh, five quick holes, and I am packed. I don't even think I got probably down three holes before this thing was full, which is good and bad. Um, I don't think this is made to really do five eighths all day, but it has no problem. I mean, this is an inch and an eighth, so I think that's the largest diameter they recommend. Uh, but you're gonna fill up this uh, this guy with some concrete dust pretty quickly. All right, got all these uh, brackets mounted. Greg's wrapping up the last one. We're all done around, and now we can get the laser out. We'll put these uh, tops on, the, the little like standoffs that go into the bracket, and then we'll get the laser out so we can check each grade point on each bracket and transfer that to our post based off of zero elevation so that the tops of every post are exactly the same. We don't wanna just cut all of our posts to, let's say eight foot, because if this spot is lower than this spot, or we've got a little bit of slope, so this spot right here should be higher than this. You know, we gotta check each location and then transfer that to the post so that we install um, our ceiling all at the same exact elevation. So here's these uh, tops. You see we spray, spray painted them all black. And then that's what our post will sit on. That way the post is not sitting necessarily down on the concrete. Now what we're gonna do is turn this on We've got this set just at whatever, it doesn't matter because we've got the receiver on a stick, right? So now that we have a zero established, we can go up to any bracket and make sure that our stick is plumbed by looking at the bubble. And this is saying, it's kind of bouncing between three eighths, it's right at seven sixteenths. I would always go the smaller measurement because sometimes when you put a board on there, it might be a little bit of an angle. So let's go seven six. Is this minus? Three eighths. What's that? Is this minus or a plus? Just put, 
left. If we're high, it needs to go down. No, if we're low or we need to go up, that means the bracket is high. So we're taking off three eighths from zero. So just go ahead and put three eighths on that. These are all gonna be minus. So they're all gonna be minus. Well, they're minus in a sense, yes, because the bracket is too high for this laser right. receiver. So we need to take off three eighths. Zero. 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 Nice. Whew. Man, it's cold. But now that we got all these brackets marked, we're gonna go inside where it's less windy, much more warm, and we're gonna use all these marks to uh, to make all of our columns up in the comfort of the shop and the other side versus out here in the freezing cold. So these columns are all cut down to the exact height uh, that we need, which is based off of one of these dimensions that Greg pulled off of the brackets outside on the porch that we set with the rotary laser. And what I've got to do is cut two ears off so that, and I think it'll make sense when I make the cuts, so that we can frame this the way that we're hoping to frame it. So you just see me make a cut at inch and a half across both sides. And now what I need to do is grab the carpentry chainsaw. You haven't seen this a whole lot on the channel. There she is, 16 inch bar. It's corded, so maybe someday they'll come out with a cordless version, but it's great for doing this sort of cut right here. I don't have oil for this. It does take some bar oil, but we're not gonna be making a ton of cuts, so I'm gonna hopefully uh, get through this without ruining my chain, because obviously the harder the wood, you gotta have that chain nice and lubed up. So now you can probably see what we're doing. This is the top of the column right here. And we're gonna be running multiple two bys, one on the inside, one on the outside. And that's gonna be giving us a place to install our ceiling and our soffit to, and be secured, I think in a good way to this post versus just setting on top of it, maybe in like this sort of a manner. A little bit extra work, but I think it's gonna work out pretty good. Nice. We've got a reference line around this whole building that we shot with a laser, and we're gonna use that in order to reference our ledger that will start our roof system. Now, that ledger, we want to be plumb, or sorry, level with our columns. So what we did was we set one column just to confirm uh, that it was level back to the wall. We got that dimension, and now we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves reference lines ac around the building so we can install our ledger. So then we can install this two by six board that is gonna be tying in. I don't know what the name of it is. We're gonna call it our tie-in board. Yeah. Okay, you got it? Oh yeah, dude, that's a laser line up there. I think this might be a cool way to do this, Greg. Yeah. All right, so now you guys can start to see the way we're gonna do this where our six by six is notched out. And I did that with that uh, carpentry chainsaw by Skill Saw, which made it pretty easy to make these notches at full depth being a five and a half inch post. And now our outside and inside two by six is gonna rest right in here. So that's gonna be a nice bearing point so that when our a bottom cord of our truss that we're gonna make sits on this, all the weight will be bearing right here on the six by six, the whole roof system. So the only weight that is carried by these beams is the weight of itself and the soffit. So we're gonna double this up. 
There'll be some boards that we'll use to connect these to like make them into a stronger, instead of a single ply two by six, it'll be more like a double. Then we're gonna wrap all of this in smart side trims. And that was the main goal here. Typically we use a six by six piece of cedar for this top header for the look. However, they didn't want that. They're gonna change it up and I think it's gonna be kind of cool. So stick around if you're uh, you know, curious as well how that's gonna turn out. Okay, you'll notice that on uh, Greg's side there, he's got a notch. That notch is gonna set right on top of this ledger. Uh, it's gonna make it a lot stronger than just being toenailed. We will come behind though and we'll throw a little hanger in that area also just to add some supported weight in case that little notch decides to crack. All right, so we got a, a detail here that we, I wouldn't say overlook because we thought about it, but now that we're actually building the porch, I think we're gonna do a little bit different. So originally we had blocked up here, um, and then when we talked to our truss manufacturer, we ended up changing the way we were gonna do this porch and, and are running a two foot on center, like residential style truss instead of an eight foot on center porch uh, trust that we would normally make. But because the client changed the way that they're gonna do the ceiling, or we came up with the idea of having a vaulted ceiling that matches the inside with a wood ceiling, um, so that it all kind of ties together, it meant that I was gonna have to do some extra work and I said, you know what, let's just go ahead and run a two foot on center, like residential truss, which means that my engineer had a spec a double, a double LVL, nine and a quarter or nine and a half inch LVL, that's gonna to attach to this wall and it's gonna go across. Now we're only spanning eight foot, so this is a very small span for a double LVL, but I need to get some way of mounting it right here. So what we've got is this here. This hanger is a Simpson hanger and this is gonna be mounted like so and our LVL is gonna sit in this pocket. Now the problem is that I don't have, because this was not my plan, I don't think I have anything underneath this sheathing right here. So I've got an, a girt that runs across and there's a post right here. This line is actually the center of my post and I've got a girt that comes right here. So there's these two girts coming through, but I don't think I have anything solid behind the sheathing between that inch and a half gap between my post and the sheathing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some investigatory work I'm gonna have to cut into my uh, weather logic, which is fine because I can always replace it, seal tape it, and it's not gonna be damaged in any way. It's not gonna hinder my quality of air barrier, water barrier, but it'll ensure that I know when I put this on here that I'm gonna be lagging into something solid. So that's the important thing, and that's what we're doing here. Um, I always like to think ahead and remember you know, what we're gonna do, how we're gonna do it, and, and be proactive, but I guess I can't always remember or think of everything. And that's just the way it goes. So you see right here is spray foam coming in behind the column. So I never would have hit anything. So I'm just gonna cut this out, give myself a place to put a block. Oh man, that worked out really well. So once again, this is providing backing. So when we put our long lag screws through the sheathing, we don't want it to squash. We want it to be solid all the way back to that post. Okay. 
There we go. It's almost like it never happened. You know what they say, once you slap it and say it ain't going nowhere, it ain't going nowhere. Um, okay, so now that is ready to accept our LVL. You got it? Yeah, it's not that heavy. Now just lift yours up and slide it in there. Okay, hold on a second if you can. Now, let me move over there so I can uh, get it in the pocket. So this is a double nine and a half inch uh, LVL. This was spec by the uh, truss engineer. Look at that. I think we're golden. Let me do that all there. by myself. I actually helped you, but yeah, you did all of it. All me, You get the level out yep. or no? Yeah, let's just check this. <laughs> 0 0.05 again. Yeah, see, look at that. I'm not even. I'm. I'm not even lifting that end up over there. That, that's so the water slopes oh, yeah. off the roof. Exactly. Exactly well, we crowned this, so there's actually a little bit of a crown there. Okay. Wait, wait. It should be zero. So it should be uh, six and a half. That's what we are. Let's go. The two headers done now, and those headers are going to support this main truss system throughout the middle that's going to have the raised bottom cord, and kind of made a move that I think is going to work out, but definitely made a mess. Take a look at this. So the telehandler had a load of lumber on it, which is this right here. We're going to need that. That's our, mainly that's a lot of our purlin material. We don't want to have to lift all these trusses by hand, so we want to try to get that telly as close as possible right here. Then we can put the boom up over and pick each one of those trusses up at a time and hopefully lift them into place. I don't know if it's going to work, but I definitely want to do as much um, lifting with this machine instead of me and Greg. It's going to be 50 today, I think 57 tomorrow, and then it's going to freeze back up, it looks like, which is good because by then we should be done with all of our framing on this porch and we need to then get to the outside where we can run our scissor lift, run our sheathing, uh, and I don't want to have to work out of the mud. It just makes a mess. It's not that I don't want to get muddy. It's that I don't want to make a mess around the job site. All right, so you'll notice above me we've got our trusses. These are going to be two-foot-on-center trusses, so the underside is going to get a wood or some form of a uh, a wood-like ceil uh, ceiling. So, like, um, think about, like, a tongue-and-groove, you know, uh, one-by-eight or something like that. And I didn't want to have to do a ton of additional work like we did on the inside to make that happen and lose potential headroom. So this was a good way to do it. We maximized the underside scissor, and at two foot on center, we'll be able to just run right off of the house um, and come out with our boards or whatever that ceiling product ends up being, I think a lot easier in the end. And it, made, it just made everything a lot easier out here. But the rest of the porch will be eight foot on center rafters that we'll frame and then put purlins in. So Greg and I are just getting this top header marked out two foot on center, and then we're gonna start laying these trusses in. Okay, as long as you stay in that pocket. Okay, that's perfect here. Let me go see what it looks like. Look at that bald eagle. Let me see what it looks like over here. That looks really good up there. Little, little tip, that's what I was always told anyway. I always look at the truss bunk and one end is usually for us painted red. And that means that's probably the corner that they set everything off of. Uh, and just to keep it consistent, you don't want to flip-flop your trusses because if the, the, if the table's not perfect and the peaks don't line up perfect and all these other you know, factors aren't perfect and you start flip-flopping your trusses from end to end, you might come up with some issues and some inconsistencies in your roof. So we always try to run all the same side uh, red and then also we always use that side as our kind of our zero point and then everything else kind of, it is what it is on the other side. <laughs> 
it ain't going nowhere. All right, I'm on my mark. Don't stand on top of the ladder. We got the first set of trusses up and uh, we kind of had to get some of those out of the way. And now that we did, we've got these last three that we'll set. And then we've got our end truss sitting over there. Just trying to avoid being out here in the mud. So we got some nice extra scrap weather logic giving me a nice path into the telly. Pretty cool. So what I'm doing here is getting some subfascia screwed on. But what you'll notice is I'm not gonna run this all the way back. I only need to run it basically to this guy here. The rest of this actually, this will all be buried. Get this where I like it, which is planed in with my roof. So what I'm doing right now is laying out where our overhang uh, tails are gonna get installed back to this first truss in. And then you'll notice this truss is lower. You see this board coming over and there's this distance, that's because <laughs> that's a dropped end truss. And it's three and a half inches lower so that we can run a two by four, like you see Greg over there fastening um, through the end, and that creates a nice strong overhang. This is great. Yeah. This one's All right, so we've got our, um, like this middle section all framed. We just finished up our overhangs. And as you can see up here, we've got our telehandler loaded up with some 5 8 roof sheathing. And we're gonna go ahead and get that started. Now what we're gonna do is start at the peak. And just because it makes more sense for us to get a nice straight line, we're not gonna actually be filling in all of this area with sheathing because in like the corners underneath the, um, the valley, there really doesn't need to be any sheathing. It would be a waste of an expensive product. So if we start at the bottom, we won't really have a good long line to go off of. Um, yeah, we could snap some lines, whatever, but we're just going to go ahead and start at the top, butt them in, and go from there. Kind of a weird day out, isn't it, Greg? Like it's hazy, but sunny? Yeah. All right, we've got our overhangs made. we got everything braced, properly spaced. Uh, this roof is all going to get sheathed because it's also going to be a standing seam and with typical metal roofs you don't always need a sheathing because the uh, the strength comes in the steel when it's screwed off however with standing seam that's not the way it is it's not a structural panel so we we need to apply some uh, sheathing underneath of it all right guys so we've got this other side partially sheathed we just ran all of our folds and uh, that's so we don't have our track saw out we'll get all of our dimensions we'll track saw all these different cuts so what we've done is snapped a a line and it's four foot three quarters off the peak. And that's so we have a three quarter inch gap at the peak. So one thing you guys are gonna notice probably, and maybe you didn't, but I'm gonna bring it to your attention, is that we didn't stagger the joints on our rough panels. And that was because when we did all this, we do that more or less for our own, I think, uh, what would you say, gratification, Greg? I think it looks cool. I think it looks like it's a stronger built building because it's intertwined with the joints. But believe it or not, with a struck one panel like Weather Logic, you don't have to do that. As long as you follow your nailing patterns, you can line up all your joints and it does make it, and it will make it a lot easier for us come time to run our tape because we'll be able to just run all of our tape in a straight line and not have to do all the stagger cuts. I think you're gonna find that when we're done and I get my drone up and it's this epic shot, it's just not gonna look the same. This looks cool. This will look eh. And then we'll cover it up with a roof and it won't matter anyway, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Easy peasy. We got all those six by six cedar posts up. Now we'll go ahead and frame in the perimeter, get them locked back to the wall. Greg, we do need to get some snap lines. We've got this one here, but then we'll have to get around the corner here. So I'm putting blocks in between the inside and outside. And really what's that, what that is doing is just kind of making this a more rigid structure so that hopefully it can stay straighter, uh, longer, look better, and overall just be a stronger header. Now that we have these posts up, we've got this you know, header kind of going across there. We need to figure out exactly where to put these posts. Now you could plumb them all up one at a time, but what I find to be really easy is that if we get one lock down, which this one right here is on the corner of the building. So we know that if we lock this one down uh, on a plumb, you know, perfect, I guess, location, so it's perfectly plumb, and we lock down that end one perfectly plumb, what we like to do is then see this board that's going out across? That actually creates our two by six fascia. So that's what we're going to mount our fascia to. We can go ahead and measure out. We've got a 16 inch overhang, and what I've done is I've measured out on this end and I've measured out on that end. These posts here, these can be kind of in and out a little bit. We obviously use the level when we set them. You guys saw that, but they might not be perfectly in line with this one. So what we'll do is we'll snap a line through these, uh, to these two by sixes. Then when we cut them off, put our fascia on, we can measure back to the six by six and ensure that it is the exact same dimension off the fascia, which will make it in an exactly straight line from here to there. So what we're doing is marking eight foot. So that's the spacing on these. And then we're marking 14 and three quarters. And that's because we want to give ourselves a little bit extra room on the soffit. So when we install it, um, it's not too, too tight. If I were to look down this, hopefully, if I did my job right, it's going to be visually straight. And I would say it's pretty darn good. Facial line is good. And I do see in between there's a little, you know, ins and outs, but we can fix that after we get our sheathing tied into our subfascia. Then we can come back and we can kind of push and pull that just a little bit. All right, so what I've done now is I've got my two by 12 set up. This is gonna be our rafter and it's gonna be setting every eight foot on top of one of those two by sixes. And I also went and measured exactly the dimension of each one because in a post frame, um, we straighten our bottom, we straighten our top, but the middle of a 17 foot tall post, like on this building, there could be you know maybe an eighth of inch, quarter inch, whatever it is, bow in a post. So if I just go off of what it should be instead of what it actually is, once I've straightened my fascia um, and plumbed everything up, then I might be inaccurate. So, so by measuring each one individually, I have a better chance of everything being um, like it should. It doesn't take a whole lot of extra effort to, to go grab five quick measurements and that'll get all my rafters over here back on this end. The thing that doesn't change is the pitch. So I did use math. Once I know the run of my rafter that you know you got a triangle basically so if a rafter sitting like this you've got run rise and angle so you got your pitch your diagonal your run your rise and your run so i know the run um that's what i went and measured and i know my pitch if you know two out of the three then you can always figure out the other ones and that's 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 simple math. So um, beauty is we've got calculators. We don't have to do all that math in our heads. So now I did that math. I've got all my other dimensions and now I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting some rafters up. 11 foot, two inch, three sixteenths. 
That's my run, 3.75 inch pitch. That gives me a diagonal of 11 foot two and a half, 3 16 So same angle that's up there. We're gonna put right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and use a straight edge here, my level. How's my uh? Five and a half. Yeah. Is that, what it, is that what it should be? Should be pretty good then. Look at that cut though, huh? Not bad, dude. Dang. It's only because there was all that added weight in my saw. All right, since we like that, since everything is like it should be, all my math must have panned out pretty decent. We'll go ahead and cut the rest of these up. That's all ready for purlins. So the one thing that's cool about the math is when you look at all those cuts, they're all gonna be very accurate. Obviously the ladder there is in the way, but I think you get the point. You can see everything fits really nice. Now all these purlins, we're just putting them in temporarily with screws, but we'll come back with an actual joist hanger. We'll install that and then uh, it'll be nice and solid. I'm not always a fan of inset purlins, but because of the sheathing, it does make it pretty easy when you get to your hips and valleys because those tops of the rafter are the top of your frame which means you've got a nice solid hip or valley when you sheathe it. It just makes more sense sometimes just to do it all one way than to kind of mix it up, which we will do occasionally, and it probably doesn't make a ton of sense. Cool, we got our first side of rafters, purlins installed. Um, there's still obviously quite a bit to do. We had to make sure that our tails were all in a nice straight line, that our posts were plumb, and we're kind of working our way around. So this kind of defines the start of where our valley will tie in right here. That's looking good. You know, what I found so far on this job is that we're pretty consistently within an eighth of an inch of where I would want to be. And now those are all done. We, we got to get some framing lumber for this hip and then we can work around the other side.